this video, I have an example of a raw data and an ungrouped data example, finding the range of variance in standard deviation. For the first example, eight students and their grades are listed, find the range, variance, and standard deviation. You can see that I listed the grades horizontally in set notation, separated by commas, and I also used brackets. To find the range, variance, and standard deviation, I'm going to show you how to do it by hand. I'm going to make an X column, which would actually be your grades for the eight students. Two students made an 85. And then I'm going to make an X squared column. And these numbers should be really large. I'll need the sum of each column when I'm done. Just use a basic calculator to square your values. 65 squared, I have 4,225. 72 squared, I have 5,184. So I'm gonna write that down twice. 80 squared, you should know that one without a calculator, is 6,400. 85 squared is 7,225. 94 squared, 8,836. 100 squared is 10,000. When you add up all of your data values, which would be your X column, the total um, that you should receive should be 653. And when you add up all of your data values which have been squared, you get a very large number of 54,000. 279. For the range of a sample, capital R, is the smallest value in a data set, and it's the largest value in the data set. Now I need to take the difference, and the difference is going to be positive. So the formula is the largest minus the smallest. 100 minus 65 and that difference is going to be 35 so that's the range of your data set 100 minus 65 Now, the variance of the sample is S squared. That's the summation of your X squared column minus brackets. The summation of your data column, but then square that summation divided by N, all divided by N minus one. So I'm gonna plug into this formula. I put the 54,279 minus in brackets, the 653 which has to be squared divided by 30, excuse me, divided by eight, all divided by eight minus one. So we have eight pieces of data for eight students and their grades. I highly recommend that you find the magic number that is in brackets by taking the 653 and squaring it and then dividing by your 8. And write down that number, 53301.125, all divided by 7. So 53301.125. I'm going to subtract that from the 54,279. I'm going to use the idea of second answer so that I don't have to retype the 53,301.125. I'm 
I'm going to say minus second answer. And that second answer is your second button. And ANS is in blue here above my negative symbol here or my negative button. And that allows us to input second answer. Enter. That's my numerator of 977.875, all divided by 7, and that gives me my variance of 139.6964286. Since my data values, my x data values or my raw data values or whole numbers, technically I would need to round this to the nearest tenth accurately. So 139.7 and I'll box that and check it. 139.7. Now standard deviation is easy. Put that here. Often I abbreviate it like this and it's S is the square root of variance. It is important that you take the square root of the exact variance you found, not your final rounded area uh, answer. So 139.6964286. And I'll show you that on the calculator. So I'm going to start, it looks like I erased the answer for the variance even though I think if I do second answer, it'll call that back up for me. Um, but I'll go through the process of finding the variance again. Um, and maybe this will be a, a great way to show you how to put all of this into the calculator in one step instead of different pieces like I did here. 54,279 minus parentheses 653 squared divided by eight parentheses. So you can enter that and that's your numerator. All divided by 7. So there's your variance. And I don't want to retype the variance because even though it appears that the decimal may be terminating, it does not necessarily terminate. The calculator stores it as the non-terminating decimal that it may be as the exact answer. So to be even more precise or specific, I to take the square root of second answer and on this calculator my square root button is in blue it's above my x squared button I'd have to press second x squared before I even call up my square root symbol and then I did second square root of second answer and then I arrow out from under the radical and press enter there's my standard deviation. And I'll write that number down and then I'll round that number. 11.81932437. That also should be 11.8 to the nearest 10. So there you have it for this class of eight students and their scores. This is the range, the variance of the sample, and the standard deviation. I cannot say based on the measurements that um, the data values have very little variation. Um, I mean a variance of 139.7 and a standard deviation of 11.8 can be kind of high so it does look like they are somewhat varied uh, with respect to the class average. I did not even find the class average but I can do that. Um, and I'll just do that on my calculator instead of showing that by hand. For this data set, I took my TI-84 and I went ahead and put my values in the L1 column. And those are my eight students and their scores. And then you go back to stat, arrow over to calculate and press enter. And the L1 column frequency list is blank because it's raw data and then enter in on calculate. So the class average looks like a lot, about a 81.6 if we round to the nearest tenth accurately. 
and the standard deviation is given here by the S sub X, which is what we found to be 11.8. Um, if you remember, when we added up all the data values, we did get 653. And when we added up all of the uh, data values squared, that column, we got 54,279, which is here by hand. So the standard deviation. And if you scroll down this list, you don't see the variance. So I'll show you how to find that on the calculator. You will go to second stat. arrow over to math and it's number eight press enter the calculator and I accidentally press min let me go back clear that out stat test scroll down excuse me second stat arrow over to math go down to variance and then tell my calculator that I want the variance for column L1. And the variance is 139.7. And just remember under second stat or the list menu, you could call up the mean as an individual value, the median, the standard deviation, and the variance. And that's good if you don't want to call up all of the information at one time. So you can call up all the information with the exception of variance. It does give standard deviation and the mean and the median. Um, or you could call out each individual value by going to second stat, the list menu, and going over to the math menu there to call out each individual uh, value. So the class average, again, um, you wanted that. L1 column was 81.6 or about an 82. Remember the definition of this. These measurements of variation describe the spread of the data in the data set. So these scores with respect to the class average of 81.625. So in terms of dispersion from the mean or the class average, the standard deviation is 11.8. I will say it would probably be better to have a smaller standard deviation for that class, which means there would be very little variation in the scores with respect to the class average, and those students would be even more consistent, and that's a great situation for a teacher and also for a class. So 11.8 is not extremely high, but it's not small either. Um, so the scores are somewhat varied. You have the extreme case of the 65 and the case of the 100 at the other end of the spectrum. That's the raw data example. I now have an ungrouped data example. 20 students in an English class read either no books, one book, two books, three books, or four books during the semester. Find the range, variance, and standard deviation. With a problem like this, I'd set you up with a table. Uh, books read would be your X column and the number of students reading those books um, would be the frequency column. So five of the 20 students, they read nothing. They probably did not do well in the course. Three of the students read one book. Six of the students read two. Four of the students read three textbooks or three novels or whatever. And then two students out of the 20 read four whole books during the semester. So they probably made very good grades in, in the class. Because obviously we know that the more you read, um, the better your grades are probably going to be. Statistically speaking, the more that you read, the better your grades. So to do this by hand um, and find the range variance and standard deviation, First, I want you to note that the sum of the frequency column is 20, because I'm having 20 students here, and the number of textbooks or books or novels that they read in a semester. I did not leave very much room, but I would need a F times X column, and I'll do that first. 
um, because that particular column is involved in my formula for variance and standard deviation. It's pretty simple. I just multiply straight across 0 times 5, 1 times 3, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, and 4 times 2. And I'll need the sum of that column. And then I need the F times data value squared. And I'll show you what this looks like. The only thing that's squared is the actual data value. The frequency is not squared. So the frequency of 5 times 0 squared is 0. The frequency of 3 times 1 squared is 3. The frequency of 6 times 2 squared is 6 times 4, which is 24. The frequency of 4 times 3 squared is 4 times 9, which is 36. The frequency of 2 times 4 squared is um, 2 times 16, and 2 times 16 is 32. And I'll need the sum of the F times X squared column. So you will add up those And the sum of the F times X column, 0 plus 3 plus 12 plus 12 plus 8. Well, 12 and 12 is 24. 24 plus 3 is what? 27. 27 plus 8 is 35. And the sum of the F times X square column, 0 plus 3 plus 24 plus 36 plus 32. That should give you a total of 95 if you add all of those up. Now, with the values, you can find the range. The range is the largest data value minus the smallest. So 4 minus 0, 4 books were read. That's the spread of the data values there. Uh, again, keep in mind, it's not beneficial to do this, but if you needed to write out the raw data, you would have to list 0 five times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You would have to list 1, 3 times. We'd have to list two six times. You'd have to list three four times. And you'd have to list um, four two times. So the first five students read no textbooks. The next three students read one textbook. The next six students read two textbooks. The next four students read three textbooks. And the last two students in the class read four textbooks. So that's all 20 students represented there in the number of textbooks or novels that they read in an English class. It's just not beneficial to write it out as raw data because you often in these tables have a lot of data. 20 pieces of data is not a lot, but if this table were to represent 100 students or 200 students or 300 students, you're not going to write out all 300 students and their scores or, in this example, the number of textbooks that they read. So the number of textbooks that they read would be the values that I want to concentrate on. And I'm talking about range, the largest minus the smallest, which is for um, novels. Now, the variance is the sum of the F times X squared column minus the sum of the F times X column, quantity squared divided by N, all divided by N minus 1. And that's why we calculated the sum of the columns. So 95 minus 35, but then square it, divided by 20, all divided by 20 minus 1, which is 19. Plug it into the formula would look like this. And 
the value that you would get in brackets 35 squared divided by 20 is 61.25 subtract from 95 and you get 33.75 and then the last thing you do is divide by 19 and that number is I have to write that here 1.77 six three one five seven eight nine and that's going to round my data values are whole numbers the number of textbooks or novels read i round this to the nearest tenth according to the rounding rule in the textbook of pearson says to round to one additional decimal place compared to the raw data or the midpoints in a group data situation so this is 1.8 for our variance that's what we would state as our variance of this sample and then the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Again, remember that you should take the square root of the exact variance. And I'll show you how to do this on your calculator. I'm going to use the older calculator to show you this. Remember, it was 95 minus parentheses 35 squared divided by 20. For our numerator, divided by 19. There's my variance. Second square root of second answer. With the old calculator, I've got to put parentheses um, around the ANS. I still did second X squared button to get second square root and then of second answer and then press enter the standard deviation is 1.3 approximately so I'll write that number down And remember, these numbers represent the number of novels or books read. So the standard deviation is approximately 1.3 books. The variance is approximately 1.8 books. And the range is exactly 4 books there. The average number of books read we did not find because we'll need to know the average number of books read for variance and standard deviation to make sense. Um, again, by definition, these measurements like variance and standard deviation describe the spread of data in a data set with respect to the mean of the data set. So I went to my stat button and edit, and I already have my X's in L1, the number of books read, and then my frequencies in L2. Once I have my values, I go to stat and calculate and press enter on one variable stats. This is the OTI-83, so I physically have to do the parentheses, the L1, comma, L2. Remember the comma button and the um, parentheses button, all here. And then I call up my columns from here. So second number one will get me L1, second number two will get me L2, and then press enter. You can see that the average number of books read by the 20 students um, in the semester or summer vacation is 1.75. This 35, I know it says it's the total of the X column, but this is the total of frequency times X column, which we found by hand. Which is here. So the calculator gives sigma X is 35, but that's sigma F times X. The calculator also gives 
sigma x squared is 95, but that's the same as f times x squared that we calculated by hand. Just thought you would find that to be neat. And then the standard deviation is about a 1.3. Again, to get the variance, you'd have to go to second stat, arrow over to math, and you don't see on my calculator, you don't see variance until you scroll down and press enter. But I'd have to again do the L1 comma L2 because this is an ungrouped data example and press enter. And there's the variance. 1.8 books read. So that is an ungrouped problem. I would need columns L1 and L2 to put it into the calculator. Or if I'm not using a calculator, I'd have to use this formula. I'd have to find these totals and plug into the formula. So raw versus ungrouped. I hope that with these two examples, it gives you a better understanding of what um, variance and standard deviation actually means. Again, you have to know the average of a data set to understand those measurements. The spread of data in a data set with respect to the mean of the data set. And we didn't talk about it, but for the number of books read, um, the standard deviation of 1.3 is pretty small. Um, standard deviation for this particular class of 20 students. So I would say that that indicates that the students are less varied with respect to the average number of books read, which I believe was 1.75, less varied, and that means they're more consistent with each other, which is great. Yes, the average number of books read X bar um, was 1.75. So with a standard deviation of 1.3, pretty small standard deviation, um, that means that the individual students and the number of books that they read would be less varied with respect to the overall average of the class and this being the average number of books that they read. And that means they're more consistent with each other. And you could graph, um, make a, a graph, a line graph of these particular students. Um, you would need to, you, you know, a ruler would be nice, but you'd make a horizontal line and you would label this X and you would, um, I guess the best thing that you could do is you would probably need to increment this and do your very best to make it look equivalent. Zero, one, two, three, and four. And a few moments ago, I actually took the time to list out all the raw data. So I would let this student be X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, all the way to X20. And I would just begin to label the values. So, or I could put little dots, like the first five students. One, two, three, four, five. That's called a dot plot. And then three students read one textbook or one novel. Um, six. And then four, and then two. And then the overall class average is 1.5, so there's 1.75. And you could actually draw like a vertical line in there. And you can see that 
the spread of the data or the uh, standard deviation is about a 1.3 and you can see the spread of the data in the data set with respect to the mean of the data set. So instead of x1, x sub 20, you could just put little dots and um, according to you need five zeros, one, two, three, four, five, you need three ones, one, two, three, those three students, you need six of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, um, four students read three textbooks, one, two, three, four, and then two students read four textbooks. That's called a dot plot for this particular problem, which gives a great visual graph um, of what's going on. So that will conclude this particular video, giving you a raw data example and an ungrouped data example and showing how to find the range, variance, and standard deviation. I hope and pray that it has helped you and increased your knowledge of how to uh, calculate these by hand and also use your calculator. So thank you very much and have a blessed day.